Uh, it was born from a feeling of wanting to do more, wanting to be more than just a football player. Um, I always knew it was bigger than football. And finally having the platform and having the opportunity to make it that, mm -hmm. uh, I owed it to myself, I owed it to my family, I owed it to anybody that, you know, ha had been a part of my life um, to live that out. Uh, that's where the, the I Am Gifted Foundation, the I Am Gifted brand was born. It's more than that, it's a movement. We just want to encourage people uh, that everyone was born with a gift and we just have to find yours, use it, embrace it, and use it to shed light in this world. What are you grateful for? And I'm just grateful that I had the opportunity to wear that silver and black. Say it one more time for the people in the back. You'll just see the unity, the passion, the family, everything that, that the Black Hole stands for. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's time for an all new episode of Raiders Talk of the Nation. I'm Sibley Skulls, joined by one of our very own sporting silver and black. You already know, number 22, Alexander Madison. Before we get into everything, obviously being here with the Raiders coming on this year, I want to talk about 22 really quickly for the fans who don't know. You've worn that in high school as well, college here, uh, the team prior. We'll get into that as well, too. What is the significance of 22 for you? It was a moment where, so I, re I wore number two as a kid. And I got to high school, and I was just being realistic. Like, no running back in the NFL can wear a single digit right. at that time before, you know, the rules changed and everything. But I was like, you know, if I want to keep my number in college and in the pros, then I'm going to have to double it up and give myself the best chance to like end up at 22 the, my whole career. And it worked out, you know, high school 22, college 22. And then I'd switch it up because I ran into, you know, a guy, Harrison Smith, who, you know, he yeah. wasn't gonna come out of that number. <laughs> He's like, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, but it, it feels good to be back in it. And uh, yeah, the, the, the two is special to me. You know, I, I, I refer to it my, as my angel numbers, 222. So it uh, also has that significance for me too. I love that. Angel number, let people know what that means exactly. Yeah, it's just, you know, a spiritual number that has meaning. And, um, you know, for me, the 222, that hope. And it's just something that I, I keep near and dear to my heart. Yeah, we like that. See, we knew there was something behind yeah. that. <laughs> San Bernardino, what was it like growing up there? What was the influence for you? How did sports become a part of your life? I mean, you know, it, it was a, it was a rough uh, upbringing, San Bernardino. Um, you know, if you do your research, it's definitely not known for the best thing. So navigating through that um, was a rough childhood in that sense. But uh, having my family, having my mom and dad, my aunt, my uncle, my brothers, my cousins, uh, the tight knit family, the strong and faith family that we were uh, made a lot, made everything so much better. And then, of course, you know, the love of football. My brother started playing football and I was too young to play. So I ended up playing soccer when I was five. And I remember just being on the you know, side of his practices, warming up, mocking their drills. And my parents, they saw how serious I was, so they let me play when I was six. And I fell in love with the game and never looked back. And that was one of my motiv motivating factors and driving factors to help uh, get me out and help not only get out, but use my platform once I got out to come back and make the city better. Um, and so, you know, to this day, I, I hold the 909 with pride, got it tatted on me. and. Uh, everything I do, I, I carry it with me. That's pretty remarkable to be so young um, and to acknowledge, you know, your surroundings like that and want to make that change later in life. And you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a blessing. How often do you go back? I mean, I'm sure it's back and forth easy now, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely a lot easier <laughs> now uh, being, being a three hour drive away. Uh, but I mean, I go back every off season uh, when we have our breaks, you know, that summer gap go back I host my camp back home uh, I do scholarships with my alma mater I do a lot of different things back home just to try and bring some hope and spread some love and positivity even though the things that you saw there growing up um, and knowing like you want to bring that positivity and change the way things are there for the best you know for the good um, what's the one thing you learned about yourself growing up there that's a great question um, I learned how resilient I am. And that's something that 
I'm glad that I was able to figure out, you know, one day looking at myself in the mirror, understanding, you know, all that I've been through, the adversity that I've had to overcome, the adversity that I've had to see my parents overcome, that it was in me to be resilient and fight through any adversity that comes my way. And uh, I think that's probably something that, you know, to this day I carry with me is that San Bernardino spirit of resilience and, and grit. I love that. Had to think about that one for a second, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I've never been asked that question. It's it's good to like vocalize. Yeah, yeah to say it out loud. Um, well, the resilience continued from a young one to college, being there, the career success that you had, Boise State. Um, because I do want to talk to you about a player running back that's coming out of there right now. I'm sure you yeah. know who I'm going to mention. But talk to me about the influence that had and just the success you had while you were there. Yeah, it was a one of a kind atmosphere, one of a kind place to be. I'm glad that I got to experience playing on the blue. It's that culture is contagious there, the winning culture, the blue collar mindset. Um, and I was blessed to receive an offer and blessed to get the insight and the feeling of, you know, this is where I need to be to go there and, and experience that. And um, it's, yeah, it's one of those places that I, I tell people, look, you know, you might think of, you know, Bama and this and that when it comes down to like being on the big stage. But, you know, it's one of those places I'm here today, six years in because of a lot of those values and that work ethic that I built on top of, uh, you know, everything that I've worked my whole life for. But at Boise State University. So, yeah, it, it's an amazing place. Good times. The kid I'm talking about, Ashton yeah. Yeah. Genty. Ashton Genty, yes. Okay, I was listening to Marshawn talk about him with Mike Robb recently. He's one to watch. Yes, he's one of one. How does it, yes, <laughs> one of one. I think Marshawn even said that too. He's him. What is it about him and his game? Do you, like, what do you attribute to his success that he's having over there right now? Man, it's, uh, he's just got, he's got the it factor. He has... I think the perfect balance of where his height, weight, strength, speed, everything is just put together properly, where he's he's really compact and explosive, and that helps him get out of a lot of different tackles, and he has the top end speed to run away from guys. And then, of course, uh, like I said, that mentality, that yes. blue collar work ethic, he's not gonna just settle for a 50 yard run. He's gonna try and get that 62 yard, touchdown yes. <laughs> whether it's fighting off five guys at the end at the goal line or not so yeah he's just one of a kind and it's so great to see uh, a great player in him but a great person too you know having a conversation a relationship with him outside of football uh, he's just a great human being and uh, it's just amazing to see and I love I love that he's rocking the two you know it's, yeah <laughs> yes. it, it looks even better in yeah. The two. yeah you're like you look good in that yeah um, the influence that I'm sure, again, like you said, knowing him off the field and you guys have a, a great relationship, you're an influence to him, I'm sure, and he influences you, yeah. you know, but your time in college and then coming into the league, who were some guys that you looked at or influences that you had coming in? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's funny you mentioned Marshawn Lynch was uh, one of the huge uh, influences on my game. Uh, him, Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles, uh, those were pretty much three of the backs that I kind of molded my game after watching growing up and, you know, learning. And it was just uh, one of those things where it was, you see a player, you kind of can see a little bit of yourself and you use what they have to kind of mold and shape your game. But I'm glad that I wasn't the type of kid to say like, oh, this is my favorite player and that's the only player, but to pull from a bunch of different players because right. they all have different skill sets that make them unique um, so just watching them and, and learning from them, it was definitely a big impact on my game. Do you have a relationship with those guys? And it's cool you landed at both those teams, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Minnesota I mean, and Raiders. Uh, yeah, I got AP locked in my phone now. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, I've, I've met a few different times now and had some conversations with him. I'm not yet connected with Jamal Charles, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome to see. I, I kind of gave AP the, the old man uh, comment after my rookie year. What'd you we, say? We played them and he was, at that time, he went to, uh, uh, to Washington. Yeah. And after the game, you know, he came up to me and we were talking, we had a moment and, uh, you know, I had a pretty good game. So he was like, he called me Beast Mode 2.0. And I was just like, yo, this is, this is crazy, this yeah. is AP. And I told him, I said, man, I grew up watching you. And I was like, oh, 
I don't mean to make you feel old. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't, in the moment, you know, I was like, I'm sorry. But like, man, I looked up to you. I look up to you still to this day. So yeah, yeah it, it was awesome. That's cool to have those moments. And now he's in your phone Yeah. and you guys are cool. You can call him, I'm yeah. sure, for, yeah. for anything. I like to ask guys who are in the league about the college experience and then going into the league. What's the comparison between those two and how do guys, you know, go from what you do to being in that actual game? It's a, it's a big difference. When you get out there on the field, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's between the lines. You know, you have 53 yards horizontally and linebackers can move lateral. Some of those DBs on the back end, they can come downhill really fast. And it's about, you know, being strategic. It's about learning angles. It's about learning how to manipulate a defense, how to manipulate your angles to combat what a defense is bringing at you. So uh, for me, I look at it in a whole different mindset when it comes down to game speed. And that's what makes a big difference. And that's what, you know, some of these young guys coming in, they have to really adjust to at first. Remember that that's a tip, adjusting, yeah. understanding, like yeah. it's gonna be a little different, but you got this. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, here we are, Raiders emblem right there, looking at us silver and black suiting up for the first time in that knowing the history of this organization and what you're playing for in your career right now what does it feel like to you to to have that honor feel special um especially being a, a southern california kid um it's it's something that you know i grew up around knowing so many different people and seeing so many people i mean you see growing up in the neighborhood people have it tatted on the side of their head or yes. like it's, it's one of those, like Raider Nation is special. And so now being a part of it um, and seeing it, I just love it so much. And the grit, the mentality behind what it means to put on the silver and black is all that much more special when you dig into the history and you dive into what it really means to be a Raider. Uh, it's, it's, it's an honor. Is it cool to, do you get to interact with any of the alumni? A lot of the guys come around too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, one of my, uh, mentors who uh, helped, I mean, he helped be a mentor to me since I was in the fifth grade, Greg Bell. Um, he spent some time here, so uh, he does some of the, the um, you know, the alumni stuff, and it's, it's awesome for him to kind of share some of his stories with me as well. When you think of Raider Nation, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? It's funny. I think of like the, the crazy like costumes and, and stuff like, I don't know, whenever I hear it and think of it, I just remember always seeing some crazy mask or face paint. Um, it's called war paint. War paint, get, there it goes. Get it right. Yeah, I know, the <laughs> war paint. Right. I, lo I love the war paint <laughs> and like the shoulder pads with the spikes. Yes. Like that's, I remember being a kid and seeing that. And I was Violator, like, that is talking amazing. about Violator. I love it. Yes, I'm gonna tell Violator you shouted him out. Yeah, Okay. <laughs> shout out to the Violator. Besides, you know, what you do, um, you know, on the field as an NFL player, you have such a philanthro philanthropic background. You do so much. I know it's coming from the heart. You can tell it without even knowing your stories. Um, I know recently you posted uh, your foundation, you're relaunching it. Yeah. So new look, more involvement, even more than what you had before to make sure it continues to go where you want it to go. Can you give us some background on that, how it started? what you do in your foundation yeah definitely uh for me it was uh it was born from a feeling of wanting to do more wanting to be more than just a football player um, i always knew it was bigger than football and finally having the platform and having the opportunity to make it that mm -hmm. uh, i owed it to myself i owed it to my family i owed it to anybody that you know ha had been a part of my life um to live that out and because I've always you know had that mentality in high school college and finally getting to the NFL I didn't want to just slap Alexander Madison on some t-shirts or slap my face on some merchandise and have a camp or anything like that but I wanted it to be more than that so uh, that's why I took my time with it and I remember having a conversation with my mom and uh, she's always showing love and, and re-emphasizing to us you know how special we are how loved we are, how gifted we are. Um, and I remember a conversation we had where she was just kind of giving me those positive affirmations and it stuck with me months later. I, I thought about it and I was like, what do I want my brand? What do I want this to be? And that's where I came up with the movement of I am gifted and using you know, my initials to mean more than just Alexander Madison, but to mean something deep. 
And so uh, that's where the, the I Am Gifted Foundation, I Am Gifted brand was born. It's more than that, it's a movement. We would just want to encourage people uh, that everyone was born with a gift and you just have to find yours, use it, embrace it and use it to shed light in this world. Um, you know, I went through a dark time in college where I almost walked away from the game of football because, you know, life, it, was, it was a lot of adversity. And, you know, I shared the, the resilience that I found within myself. Um, really, I, I was able to find that through that dark time and understand that, you know, at the end of the day, I am loved. Mm -hmm. And I, I either used my support system, I uh, leaned on them heavy. And I just remember thinking about some of the people that I have I, I come to know um, that took the opposite route of, right. you know, uh, taking their life. And for me, it was a wake up call that, you know, I'm not the only one going through a rough time. And if there's someone going through anything even similar or worse or whatever it may be, the lack of knowledge for resources, the lack of support yeah. can lead down to a bad decision like that. So for me, when I was able to find the light in a dark time, I understood that I needed to shed my light. I needed to be that light just a little bit of light in someone's dark time and that could be helpful. So that's why I wanted to just spread the love and positivity in the world and let my gift shine. So uh, that's where I'm gifted was born. Oh, well, thank your mom too for that, right? Yeah. Thank mom. And I love, this is uh, one of the hats. Yeah, yeah. I am gifted. Oh, it's good. I'm sure you do that with your own kids, you know, read yeah, affirmations, definitely. even though they're very, very young. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah. I know, and you mentioned, you know, going through the dark, dark times, having resilience. You're very vocal about this as well. Um, the Crucial Catch Initiative, I know you're a part of that. Um, your dad being resilient and beating, going fight the leukemia fight that he went through. I know that's a lot on families and having to get through that. Were you able to all rely on each other as a family to make sure you could get through that and make sure he was okay? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it was huge huge moment where we came together as a family. It was big for us uh, not knowing what the outcome would be, right. but to stay strong through that because, you know, one person is going through it a little bit more rough than another person one day, maybe. Uh, my mom needing, you know, a hug, uh, my brother needing a hug, me needing a hug, like whatever it was, we were able to lean on one another and continue to stay strong through it, have strong, um, and God's plan and understand that, you know, whatever it was, whatever it may be, uh, it's all going to be okay. And I'm glad that he's here today. I'm glad that uh, he won that fight, uh, but definitely made us stronger as a family. And something else that's making you stronger, week one against the Chargers, you had to skedaddle. You had yeah. to get out because a baby was being born. <laughs> yeah. Your son, yes. right? Okay, so let's talk about that really quickly before you go. But I also got this oh, for wow. him. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully he can wear it. You can look at it. Okay. Let's see what it, <laughs> oh, wow. This is. Now those just came out. I know you're with the Raiders and you, <laughs> you could probably get whatever you want, but look, those just came out today. So. Oh, I love it. I and love it's getting it. cooler weather. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be ready to go. <laughs> um, talk about being a dad. Obviously you have a little girl. Now you have yeah. a little boy. She's going to be you know, big sis. Yeah. What's it mean to you to be a dad in this moment in your life, you know, for a second time around and to have that strong family bond with your wife as well? Yeah. Um, I mean, it means the world to me. It brings a whole new purpose to life. It brings a whole new purpose to everything that I do. Um, you know, I mean, it started out with my daughter. Uh, you know, it was just like being a girl dad was, I mean, it is, it is one of the most fulfilling things that will ever happen to me. Um, that's even why I went with the pink, you know, and then I ended up trying to go with the blue and when, yeah. <laughs> when it was, it was his turn. I was like, I'm gonna give him the blue, but it kind of started to bleed out a little. Didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work out. So yeah. I went back to the pink, you know, uh, but it's, it's amazing. It, it is, um, just to see them every day, to see myself in them, to see my wife in them. Uh, when you create your own little human being, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And she's already now being so, so caring for her brother and, you know, giving him kisses on the forehead and calling him her little brother and everything. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, I don't take it lightly to have this opportunity to be a father and to leave a legacy. So, yeah, they're a, a big motivation factor for me. Do you want to give them a message? Which camera is his, guys? This one? 
I know that they're very, very young. But yeah. give it and we'll cut it for you. You can have yeah. it. You want to give them a message? Yeah. Alea, Akil, Daddy loves you. And everything that I do is for you. One day, you'll be old enough to understand that all the love that me and your mother have for you will pay off. And, you know, when we say no, it's not a bad thing. It's, <laughs> it's to help you learn. And um, I just love you guys so much. And I can't wait for you to run the world. That's so sweet. Thank you. Thank when, they get, when they get older, they're going to watch that. They're going to love it. Yeah. Okay, last but not least. I start Spanish classes on Tuesday. Uh-oh. So we're going to start communicating. Tu hablas español. <laughs> sí, sí, yo hablo español. Fluently? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Probably. so number one, where did it come from? Because we always see you on Los Raiders, uh -huh. the channel, <laughs> always. Where did you learn that? Um, is that just been a part of your life since you were young? I learned, I mean, my, so my mom learned about a, pre a program called the Dual Immersion Program. And... My brothers were too old to enter it because you had to do it before first grade. And so I was in kindergarten. She learned about it and she's like, OK, you're going to do this. And I kind of had no choice. It was just like put it put me in it and didn't know much about it. But it's a program where you start out learning Spanish at a young age with your core classes. OK. And it carries all the way through high school till you graduate. And I graduated with a seal of biliteracy. Um, I mean, I learn geometry, algebra two, trigonometry, uh, chemistry, biology, um, all of those things, history throughout, uh, all the way up until high school um, was in Spanish. And wow. it's just one of those things where I didn't really think about how crazy it was until, you know, you get to get older and people are like, wait, you took what in you Spanish? You did what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was just, yeah, it was, a, it was a program where it was amazing for me to, to kind of be in that and learn that. And, Growing up in Southern California, as diverse as it is, my parents wanted me uh, to be able to grow up in an environment, in a diverse um, environment, and be able to communicate. And, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome that they did that. Will you teach your kids? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. It's, okay. <laughs> it's a little hard. It's so, it's so much harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> it's so much harder. But I, I am in the process. And... Uh, Alea, she, you know, we say te amo and buenas noches. Like, yeah, that's small, one of our things that she knows. Yeah. It's harder to kind of teach the other stuff when, you know, you got a little two year old toddler that wants everything and you have to communicate with what she knows. But yeah, I'm in the process of trying to teach her. Yeah. At this very moment in time today, who would you say you are? Oh, wow. That's a deep one. I'm a, uh, father, a son, a brother, and a uh, loving and caring human being trying to do the best I can. I love that. It's a good answer. That's a pretty good answer. Surprise myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're learning something new every yeah. day. Yeah. Raider Nation, that's it. Thank you, sir, so much. It was Thank great you. to have you on. Yes. Thank you for going deep with me. It was it was good. Oh, I loved it. Send it was my love. pleasure. Send our love to the babies. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Raider Nation, we'll see you next time. This is Talk of the Nation. Bye.